Hey YouTube, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Couldn't help. I picked up a V2 Jeep Wrangler SCX24 yesterday after we had the discussion about the new electronics in the new SCX24s in the Wranglers V2 and also in the new Gladiators that will be released soon. Yesterday a couple of YouTube videos popped up with the new Gladiator as usual. Excel sent them to their reviewers to their YouTube channels and about a month ago or maybe even two months ago there was this new V2 version of the Jeeps of the Wranglers. First videos mentioning this said there is not a lot of change but there is quite a lot of change in the new electronics as we know now and I searched for videos and I only found one single video from Canada comparing the new V2 version with the old V1 version as in the Chevy, the Deadbolt and in the Betty. Unfortunately when I picked up or ordered in an online shop the Jeep yesterday there was Betty on sale so I had to buy a further Betty but didn't want to open it but seems it has already been opened spent much more money than I wanted to however arrived today fantastic several hundred kilometers <laughs> and now I will take a closer look and really compare V1 radio with V2 radio and also the ESC receiver unit because in the video I saw the guy didn't really go deeply into the new functions and some things I don't find in my cheap V2 so packing is the same but here is written somewhere V2 as you can see some stickers and that's it before I want to compare the radios, the most important questions probably many of you have. Yes, it's true. The new receiver unit, the HRZ00015 from Horizon, does not have a channel 2 out, so it's impossible to use an external ESC like the FuryTech ESCs or Modelbar Regler DE ESCs for your. SCX24 with the stock electronics you will have to change radio and receiver if you want to use a better ESC however this ESC does work better than the old ones but what I wanted to show you in the beginning too is the video I saw the guy showed a super strong drag brake in his Jeep and I don't find this in mind check this out There is no strong brake break. It's totally normal. There is no difference to the Chevy. That's also a totally stock Chevy with the old stock electronics. I did see this video and I really don't know how he found this even on the hill. Check this out. It stops, but the Chevy does the same. I check the manual if on the radio if there are some buttons. Come on, Chevy! But you see, absolutely the same. So I can't find a stronger brake drag break at all. And in this video, this was a totally abrupt stop. I wouldn't have liked this anyway. And finally, in a tiny truck with warm gears, drag brake isn't really necessary. What's different in the V2 version? The motor is also not different. I checked the Horizon website and Axial website. The spare part number is the same as it is 
in the other models. So if you go to spare parts in the Jeeps V2, you will find the motor and it's exactly the same product number and seems to be exactly the same motor. It does also look the same. Probably it's exactly the same motor, but who knows if they changed the motors for all the models of the spare part motors. If you search for the spare parts for the receiver unit in the Jeep, you will find this new unit. While you will find in the Chevys, in the Deadbolt and in the Betty, the old AE6 unit, Axial, and the new one is Horizon, it's blue shines through what else is new you get the new charger that's different to the old one i don't know if it's better or worse because i never ever in my life used one of the scx24 usb chargers however the old one had a micro usb cable to connect it to a usb plug the new one does have this cable directly to the charging unit and the new one you can see it here, has 500 milliamp charging current. The old one, however, had 800 milliamp charging current. So probably the new one is slower with the old one, a little bit less than half an hour. Battery should have been full with the new one, maybe 40 minutes. So a lower charging current. That's not super important. You get the usual stuff, your batteries, but of course with the new radio, you can also use rechargeable batteries. Better for environment. And you get the links and you get the stickers. And of course you get a new manual. I don't really know if it's new because I, yes, it's written V2. Of course it's a new radio. I didn't have a cheap V1, I only had Deadbolts, Betty's and Chevy's. So let's compare the two radios, the new radios. That's the new radio, HRZ00014, and the old radio was the AX4. It looks much more stylish, like many of the new radios, like the new Super Cheap Fly Sky or, or also this style in the new FMS trucks like the 1 to 12 wheel is cheap. It is a four channel radio while the old radio was a, or is a three channel radio. However, it's sold as two channel radio, but you can use three channels and control three channels. I will show it to you later. Form, maybe it's more stylish, but what's a big disadvantage for many of you, of course, and for me too, I don't have large hands. It's nearly impossible to drive one-handed. You have to have very large hands to drive one-handed. While with the old radios, this was super, super easy. The new radio does have the channel three, a three position switch here on the side and a push button channel four. The old radio did have the, or does have the channel three three position switch here what's a little bit annoying because you have to open it but the new radio does not have three speeds anymore as you know from the old radio slow medium high three speeds what was only dual rate more or less and you have steering and throttle trim and you could only reverse channel one steering and you have a bind button and then an off switch in the new radio what's quite nice you do have throttle reverse and steering reverse that's super nice if you use different motors and in the old radio or different escs you had to swap out the plugs of the motor many times because you couldn't simply reverse throttle. But therefore, it does not have the three speeds, so you can't change the speed. I didn't miss this anyway. I always used high speed, but maybe for some of you that's a point. And what's also 
quite nice. Now I switched it on. You do have two LEDs here. And the red LED shows the battery charging status of the batteries of the radio. If it starts to blink, they are low. And the green LED shows the status of the truck. That's super, super nice. There's also a third LED that's called G LED. I did not find so far what's that for. Maybe this starts to blink if battery is low. I didn't have low battery so far because this truck is brand new. And you do have steering dual rate, so you can adjust the steering level of your truck. So quite a nice radio with a lot of functions. If it's really better than the old one, yes, it does have channel 4 and it does have throttle reverse. If you liked the three different speeds, you probably will not like the new radio. And for many of the YouTubers, one-handed driving is super important and only really large people can do this with the new radio or people with super large hands. And now let's check the new electronics. Here's the new receiver ESC unit. What Excel did not change again and what's one of the worst points. I switch it off now. They still use two JST PH plugs for battery and motor. And probably you know this. If you pull out both You see, you have two wires here. They look nearly exactly the same. What's that? That's new too. That's probably magnets for stopping interferences. That's nice. That's new. The motor does have a probably magnetic to not interfere with the radio signal cool stuff so it's not so easy to mix up battery and motor plug however still two very similar wires exactly the same wires as it was in the chevy here it's even worth switch it off and if you working around and happen to plug the battery into the motor plug, you will destroy your ESC. So in the old unit, it was not that bad. You could still use an external ESC. But in the new unit, because there is missing channel 2, you cannot use an external ESC. So really take care if you should. And I don't know how much money Excel or Horizon did already earn because of this. If you should happen to plug the battery into the white plug for the motor, the ESC will burn and you cannot use this unit anymore. You would have to change MOSFETs, what's a really difficult operation. I did this once in a mini seaboard, but that's not for everyone. So you will have to buy a new one. You can't simply use uh, an external ESC, Furitech, Motel Borreglia, DE or whatever. And I still don't understand why they do this. Same wires, red, black, same plug. JST PH 2 millimeter plug and if you are tinkering around with your truck it's really easy to mix those up take care take care what's new in the v2 version you can switch on off lights come on by channel 3 you can switch them off center position right position this blinking mode but what's quite funny i thought in my jeep this doesn't work 
and then I found the LEDs were connected vice versa as normal so with the black wires on the bottom and the red wire in the center so light was always on and I didn't know what's wrong checked every other channel and then I found you have to reverse it the black wires have to be on top position whereas normally the signal wire what else do we have here we have a uh, channel one what's for the steering servo that's the same server that came with the old scx 24s we have a channel three what's this don't do this we have a channel three what's for the light we have a channel four what's the push button we have the headlights which i showed to you now and we have two additional ports cll2 and clr3 and i honestly i don't know what those are for i checked the whole unit it has five volts out as the old ones so every port gives five volts out I'll show it to you so five volts so take care you can connect the LEDs to every port and they will light up but you need LEDs as, as in the old SCX 24s with resistors you see those small balls here are the resistors if you would connect LEDs directly to the board they will burn you will need resistors and all ports to give 5 volts out and I did not find any function of those CLR3 and C CLL2 probably in future Excel will show us what's that for I tried every button on the radio where is it? and There was no change in voltage. Here you see the voltage. Nothing so. Future will tell us what's that for. But the old radio wasn't bad either. And the old radio or receiver ESC unit did have a channel 2 where we could connect a better ESC. It also does have an aux channel. What's channel 3 here? And you always, probably you know this, you always could simply use a cheap on-off plug and connect it to channel 3, what's called aux in the old units. Take out the lights and connect the lights to the simple switch of course you will have to do wire management and then you can control the lights it's a three position switch so but you always have to go up and down off up and down on that was super easy and quite nice and of course you could also use this aux channel for a tiny winch or a servo to make a servo winch let's connect the LEDs first so now they are on always so if you wanted you could always use for example a 360 degree servo and make a nice and simple winch come on so one direction center stop other direction so this was always super nice in the old unit too and of course you could also simply use a small ESC best to use a ESC which is powered by the 
receiver like this one, tiny C motor, can take a winch, didn't find a winch, tiny winch now from WPL, so one direction. other direction super nice and the best thing was channel 2 however the new system doesn't have channel 2 anymore so you can't connect an upgrade ESC however you can also use all this stuff you see you have channel 3 channel 4 channel 4 is a push button so you can, for example, if you want, connect a switch to channel 4. Come on. And plug the lights out. Or connect, for example, roof lights or whatever. What lights you want. And then channel 4 on off on off don't ask me why i have to push two times with those cheap switches super cheap but work nice you could also connect a lane with a c light controller using channel 4 or channel 3 and you can also use channel 3 for this so you don't have to use the already prepared channel for the headlights now I connected it to channel 3 and we have the same thing on, off, but of course it's much more comfortable on the headlight port directly. So let's give this away, but if you want to use channel 3 for example for a winch you probably should use a on off switch on channel 4 to control your lights if you want this because what happens if we put the lights to channel 4 i did it wrong now again as it arrived you have to put the black minus on top where normally the white or yellow or orange wire sits and now it works again i hope yes so we go to center position and now we will connect the tiny esc oh, let's connect the servo it's easier the endless servo to channel 3 And does it work? Yes, so lights off, servo runs in one direction or winch, center position, servo stop, lights on, top position, blinking, servo runs to the other direction. Probably you won't like this and will use channel 4 for the lights then. So that's it, and now let's come to the most important thing. This new ESC is much, much better in low speed control, and it's not as loud as the old ESC, and this is true. However, it's not totally silent. I will show you later the FuryTech ESCs on Brushed and mainly the Modelbo Regler DE ESCs. Those are totally silent. But check this out now. It's super easy to control. And you can go super, super slow. But I hope you can hear it on camera. You hear? Now, still whining. I guess the PWM frequency that sounds 8 kilohertz, probably. While in the old ones, it's super noisy. Much, much noisier. That's much lower pitch too, probably 4 kilohertz. I don't know. And can it go as slow as the new? Super nice controllable. 
check this out. I hardly move the throttle trigger and it does crawl super slow, nearly silent. And it's absolutely awesome climbing behavior, to be honest. What an ESC. And let's now compare the Chevy. I'm on high speed. I have to, it's much, much louder. I have to pull the trigger much farther. And it's not able to go as slow as the new cheap V2. It's not bad at all, but this new cheap V2 is awesome. Wow, 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 thumbs up. Let's compare the cheap and the Chevy side by side. Try to go as slow as possible. The cheap starts much earlier. So What I still cannot find is the drag break that the it was radioactive scale RC was the channel that uploaded a video last week where I compared V2 and the old version and this Jeep had absolutely hard drag break. If I do something wrong guys, maybe I missed something, there is a button for this drag break or something, please tell me. But otherwise, concerning drag break. There is no difference between those. However, what an awesome ESC and electronics. Really, really top. The only downside, you can't use an even better ESC, but do we know if they are better? There are totally silent ESCs. And therefore, I will now connect a FuryTech Lizard in brushed to my dead bolt. It's totally stock dead bolt, missing a battery, have to pick up battery. That's super easy, simply connect it, black wire down, white wire up to channel 2. Come on. It's meant mainly for brushless motors but also works with brushed motors i set it to brushed mode now jstph plugs two millimeter it's a three pin for the brushless you can plug the two pin into this plug two but if you want to do it permanently of course change the plugs and then simply connect the battery i have to pick up to the esc and power the truck up that way and we will compare it now to the new ESC and I also will compare it to the awesome I love those model Regler DE the German ESCs the AS126 RW and there's already one in my body I integrated it to the board so we will check now body with model Regler DE AS126, the German ESCs, and the dead bolt with the FuryTech Lizard in brushed mode, and the Chevy with the old SCX24 stock electronics, and the cheap V2 with the new awesome ESC. So everything connected with the FuryTech Lizard, switch it on. And
does work totally silent. Now let's switch on Betty 2. And inside here I made a special video. There is one of those awesome ESCs. Of course you could also simply plug it to the channel 2 and use it that way with or without PSC. But now I hope it works. Yes. Betty works too. Where's my Betty radio? totally silent too and now let's check this i think that's super interesting fury tech upgrade esc model borregia de upgrade esc new v2 version awesome esc and the old version v1 or whatever first let's check the noise i have to pick up the correct radio And you hear the noise quite loud. Now let's check the new V2. Okay, you can hear a little bit of noise. And now let's check the Fury Tech Lizard on brush mode. That's that one. absolutely no noise so that's 16 or whatever kilohertz i don't know and the model Regler de are on 18 kilohertz pwm frequencies so same thing check my finger and it starts much earlier check this out it starts much earlier than the fury tech and totally silent too so the new V2 version is awesome, but the Fury Tech and the Model Regler DE are even more silent because they do not make any noise at all. And now let's do a little bit of slow crawl. So many trucks, even if they are tiny trucks, on my small bench. First, let's start with the Chevy. Hope you can see my finger. Have to pull up to here. Noise. That's the slowest I can go. And reverse. In reverse, the same as in forward. So it's not bad, as we know. Every one of us knows. But the new V2 version is simply much better it starts much earlier check this out okay a little bit of whining and you can climb super slow that's really awesome and in reverse the same as in forward direction and now let's check the fury tech lizard in brushed mode throttle calibrated by Bluetooth app and I have to pull much more check it I have to pull much much more till it starts but it's absolutely silent and you can crawl slowly However, I know it because I did already intensely test those in reverse. It's, you do not have the same nice low speed modulation and control as you have in forward direction. And, well, it will is and will be my favorite in the Betty with the AS126RW also starts immediately totally silent and super 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 slow crawl and same modulation in reverse 
resin forward. So still an upgrade compared to the new V2. However, the new V2 versus the radio is awesome. Little bit of noise and really super nice modulation. I don't know. I don't even know for sure if the modulation of the S12. Let's try. I only can say, wow, XL. Thumbs up for this ESC. That's awesome. Simply awesome. Let's compare it directly to the dead board. Well, the Fury Tech Lizard on brushed is still, honestly, it's a little bit better than the new V2 and the Model Borregli DE area 612 anyway. That's <laughs> absolutely awesome. However, this is awesome. Wow. Thumbs up, Excel and Horizon for this electronic. Thumbs up for the ESC, how good it is. Thumbs down that you didn't want us to connect an external ESC. And also thumbs down for the blue color. Check this out. Always blinking in blue, so I don't like the blue color. But also thumbs up for the new radio. There are some downsides. It's You can't drive it one-handed. Probably a big downside for many of the YouTubers at least who want to film their trucks, but it's four channel. You can switch on off lights and have a blinking mode. And yeah, what's the, you can control the battery voltage of the radio. You can see if the car is connected. I don't know if this will blink if the battery low voltage is low. Don't think so. You have throttle reverse, what's awesome, what's needed normally, and unfortunately you do not have the three speeds. However, for me personally, this wasn't important anyway. What could we still do? We could check if the new radio connects to the old uh, receiver and the old radio connects to the new receiver. So let's check if the new receiver will bind to the old radio and the new radio to the old receiver. Therefore, I will put the first, let's start with the old radio, press the bind button, switch on radio. Now it's in bind mode and simply switch on the truck. It's powered up now and as I expected, did not bind and therefore probably the old receiver unit will also not bind to the new radio. The bind button is here. You see blinking lights on my Chevy but didn't bind as expected. Switch it on and switch my new chip on again. And it's still bound and does still work. So, totally new system. You can't use it with the old radio. That's it for this video, guys. How awesome new electronics from Axial. Thumbs up for this ESC Axial. And come on, thumbs down for no channel 2 out for not letting us use even better ESCs and thumbs down for the blue color of the new unit. Doesn't match the color of the body at all. 
All in all, that's an upgrade even if Excel doesn't want us to tinker. And what's super interesting still, maybe someone knows, what are those two ports for CLR3, CLL2? Future will tell us. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next video. I'll be back.